Oh, hi there. My name is Brendan. I go by B5 on the internet. And today I'd like to tell you about Query. Uh, we spell Query Q-R-I. We pronounce it Query. You can pronounce it however you want. Uh, I'm not there to hear you say it. Query is a bunch of things, but today we're going to show you the command line client. Uh, the CLI is a great place to start as it shows off a lot of what Query can do. And Query ultimately is really about collaborating on data sets no matter what form you're using it in. And so we're just going to start with creating data sets. We'll make one, show you how it works, and then uh, show you what you can do with it. So yeah, look at that. I've got a computer. How convenient. So we'll start with just the basics. This is a terminal window, and the only difference from your machine and mine is I already have Query installed. So if I type Query, hit Enter, we get the help text. And we can see a whole bunch of commands here. And there's lots to look at, but today we're just going to start with the basics of creating a data set. And for that purpose, I've got a file already ready. Um, it's a synths file, a CSV file, in fact. So first thing I'm going to do is just show you that. Um, and we'll type cat synths CSV, hit Enter. Here it is. It's pretty basic. Different manufacturers, different types of synthesizers, year of release. Simple. And so we can turn it into a query data set with the save command. And so I type query, save, and I'm going to give it a flag called body and the name of the file, which is synths.csv. Don't worry too much about the word body. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is hit enter. And voila, data set saved. That wasn't so hard, was it? So what happened? First, where did that data set go? Query took that file that I gave it and created a data set called b5 slash synths. b5 is my username. And it put it inside of the query repository. My machine has a query repository on it, and all query data sets go inside of it. I can see all data sets inside of a query repository with query list, which lists things. How convenient. So you can see I have a few data sets here. Uh, I've been doing this for a little bit. But uh, yeah, since is on that list. Uh, and so that's nice. You've taken data. You've moved it into a repository on my machine. Uh, what's special about that? Well, the first thing that's special about it is that we can move it around very easily. So without having done much, really all I've done is fed a CSV file to query. I can type query push me slash since. Whenever I'm working with query locally, I can just type me. And that refers to my own username. So me slash since is the same as v5 slash since. So I hit Enter. Query's going to take that data set and push it to its default location, which is query.cloud. Query.cloud is a service that lets you easily get at data sets on the web. It both hosts data set versions and makes them available in a browser. And so I can type query.cloud slash b5 slash since, press Enter, and voila, the data set that I just created is there. And it's got a commit, which is interesting. And it's got a download button. I can push that download button. And I can download this data set. Congratulations, you're running your own data portal. Or at least I'm running a data portal. And you could too if you downloaded Query. Uh, but yeah, OK, interesting enough. But we got to get back to that body flag. What is it? And why does it exist? In Query, we think data sets are more than just data. If you're going to use someone else's information, you need to be able to sort of understand and judge for yourself what it is. And so with Query, we think about the different parts of a data set as components. And we call them components. The body is the first component of a data set. It's the data. But there are other components, like readme and metadata, and stuff like transforms and commits and structure. We won't talk about all of the components of a data set today, but let's talk about readme and meta. So before we get to that, What's sort of exciting about Query is we're going to create another version of the same data set. And that gets us to one of the most important sort of differences between Query and any other data set tool. Query is, at its core, a version control tool. So every single data set inside of Query is versioned. And we can make a new version pretty easily, again, with the save command. And so this time, I'm going to feed two file flags, one for the readme component called readme.md, and one for the meta component called meta.json. These are both files that I've prepped in advance. So I'm going to say, again, me since to say this is the data set I'd like to add a version to. And I'm going to press Enter. Voila, new version saved. I can see that version with query log. And that's going to show me two new versions. Wonderful. Uh, you can notice something else here. Query has automatically inferred a commit message for me based on what changed. So it updated meta and readme. Meta was added, and readme was added. 
This is really useful when query is operating inside of data pipelines, where you don't really have a human in the loop to sort of name what changed. Anyways, uh, we should be good citizens, and we should push that. So let's push the new version. Query me since should go up to query cloud. And voila, let's go back to query cloud and reload. And this is where having a website that shows you your data sets is a little easier. We can look at each component that I've just created. The readme is sort of specified in Markdown, and now it's rendered out on the web page itself. We can open up the meta component and see the standard metadata that I wrote ahead of time. Uh, it also includes some additional metadata. Query will let me define whatever I want in the metadata section, but it'll pick up on stuff that is common across all data sets, like title and description. There's also another component called structure that Query has been picking up for me the entire time. Structure is where we define how a data set becomes machine readable. It includes stuff like the format that it's in, uh, Query supports CSV and JSON files, uh, and it also includes a schema, which is specified under the hood as JSON schema, which is the exact same thing that OpenAPI uses if you're interested. Query has done as much work as it can on my behalf to infer a schema. So it picked up on manufacturer ID as a string and the name as a string, and it also picked up that year of release is an integer type. Cool, so that's kind of fun, kind of useful, uh, but what else can I do with this? Well, let's pretend for a second that I'm somebody else. I'm B6, Bizarro World B5. And just to show that I have nothing up my sleeves, I type query list on this B6 user, and B6 has no data sets. Great. So, while I'm at it, I'm going to use a new command called query SQL, which, if you've ever come across SQL, is exactly what you think it is. Query lets you run SQL against data sets directly. What's more, Query lets you run SQL against data sets that you don't have. So in this case, I'm doing a join across two, two data sets, B5 World Bank population as the pop table, and B5 World Bank GDP as the GDP. I've been browsing query.cloud, and I can see from the structure components that these two data sets can be joined where the country codes are the same. And so it's going to take the population from 2019 and the year from 2019 and the country name for each country. So we hit this, we run this, hit enter, and query is going to go find those data sets, pull the latest versions down to my local repository, run the SQL command, and spit out the join. Isn't that fun? So just to recap here, if you wanted to, you could have Query installed on your machine and just give somebody an SQL statement and say, hey, just run this. And you'll know that that statement is being run against the latest versions of a bunch of data sets. If you try to run it again, before we get to that, we can type query list on this B6 user. And we can see that B6 now has World Bank GDP and World Bank population locally on their machine. And if you run SQL queries again, it will just execute those queries locally. This is really helpful. You're saving network bandwidth. Things are moving faster. And you have access to all of the same stuff that we just saw. So I can do query log B5 World Bank population. Hit Enter. And here's the log of that data set. I already have access to it. And we can sort of see here really nicely that the storage of the latest version is local, but we have remote for all of the other versions. And if I want to, I can go fetch older versions and work with them directly. What's more, I can check this data set out and turn it back into files. So I can just do query checkout b5 slash world bank population. And this will create a linked working directory that I can investigate and work with other tools. So if I cd to world bank population, the new folder that was just created, and type ls, there are all those same files now broken back into normal standard files that other tools can work with. If you have something that can read CSV files, it can work with query. If there was an update, I can just type query pull to pull down the latest. B5 world bank population. Since I am myself, I know that no update has been issued since I was recording this video. But if there was one, the newest thing would have downloaded. So yeah, there you have it. That's kind of a quick overview of creating data sets, moving them around, and running queries against them. We think that this sort of adds up to more than the sum of its parts when you look at it together. Query data sets are far more interoperable, far easier to version and move, and far easier to understand when you want to try and use them. So ideally, this makes it easier to collaborate, which at the end of the day means less work for everybody. It's really hard to make reliable data, and it's really hard to rely on other people's data. So you need things like version histories and consistent structures to be able to understand or even use that data. But we hope by making it really easy to sort of just grab whatever is useful, whatever might look useful, play with it, decide it's not the right thing, push data sets up yourself, 
It'll bring down the barriers for us working together, and it'll make us easier to consider other data sets before we jump to making it ourselves. So we hope that you'll take a second to explore Query. It's an open source project that's just rapidly developing all the time. And we'd love to have you join us. Thank you so much.